In this video we're going to take a look at Mongode, which is the newly released machine from tier 0 of the Hack the Box starting point track. This one is VIP only, so you need the premium subscription to access it. And just before I get started, let me mention the walkthrough that you have here. So you can download a PDF walkthrough, which is the official Hack the Box walkthrough. And I just want to mention that because I get a lot of people commenting on the videos saying they weren't aware of the walkthrough or why didn't I follow all the same steps that were in the walkthrough. Um, so essentially the way I do these starting point machines is I'll try to just go through and solve the machine and answer the questions and then I'll have a quick look at the walkthrough afterwards to see if there's anything important that I've missed or would be worth mentioning in the video. Uh, but I still do recommend going through them. They have a lot of good theory information and uh, there might be different ways of doing things which I don't cover in the video. Anyway, usual setup, we've got the machine booted up and I'm connected to the starting point VPN. If you're not too sure how to do that, you can go back to the starting videos, the, the first tier zero videos. I've also added the IP address and the host name to the etc host file so that we can refer the machine by the IP address or the host name. So the first question asks us how many TCP ports are open on the machine? If you've watched some of these videos before, you'll know that I often run mass scan to begin with to scan all the TCP ports and UDP ports to see what's open and then feed it into Nmap for a more detailed scan. In this case, it's asking us only the TCP ports and I already ran mass scan. It took about five minutes and didn't find any UDP ports. So to save us five minutes, let's instead use Rust scan. I'm going to do Rust scan. Let me take a copy of the IP because for some reason you can't actually supply the host name to Rust scan. And you'll see that we get this error. Okay, I get this error. You might not get this. This seems to be something to do with Parrot, I think. Um, I have this docker fix command, which let me just grab it in case anybody needs it. Um, it's in my bash aliases, so I'm going to grab docker. Okay, so yeah, there's an alias here for Rust scan, and it's running the docker image for Rust scan. But you can see here I have this docker fix which basically runs through this command. I found it on the on some GitHub issue and essentially this fixes the issue for me. This has been the case for a year or more. So I don't know, do I need to do something to actually permanently fix it or does uh, Para OS need to do something? I'm not too sure but uh, now that's done let's try and run it again. And you'll see it's working now and it very quickly finds two ports. So we've got 22 and 27,017. We could then go ahead and run a more detailed nmap scan. Let's do nmap service numeration, default scripts, and then we'll pass in those ports 22 and 27017, and then the IP address. So you can see this returns quite a lot of information, and this is from one of the nmap scripts that's run with the default scripts option. I'm going to scroll up through all of this. Okay, so we can see some information about the databases here. We've got admin, config, local, sensitive information, users. So this is actually enumerating the Mongo database for us. Uh, but we found the answer to our question anyway. We've got two ports open, SSH and the MongoDB. So let's answer that. It also asked us what service is running. And we've just seen that as well because we did our service enumeration. So let me take a copy of that. And it's asking us what type of database is MongoDB. So we've got two options. We could try them both, or we could just work out how many characters it wants. It wants five characters, and there's four asterisks and an L. So we know the answer is no SQL, but let's just assume we didn't know the answer, or we wanted to go and find out more about these two different types of databases. So we'll do SQL versus no SQL. And one of the first results that comes up here is MongoDB.com. So we know that MongoDB is a NoSQL database from this table. We could have a look at this video and learn a bit more about them. And what are the differences? SQL databases use tables with fixed rows and columns, whereas NoSQL databases use documents, JSON documents, using key value pairs. We've got some information about the development history, so NoSQL databases are a lot newer some examples of different SQL databases versus NoSQL 
what they're used for, general purpose for SQL, and then seems like quite a lot more uses for no SQL, graph, wide column, document, schema is rigid versus flexible, scaling is vertical versus horizontal, etc. Uh, we've got some benefits here as well, so flexible data models, horizontal scaling, fast queries, easy for developers, and how to try it. Okay, so let's go back, let's see what else it was asking us. Oh yeah. And what is the command name for the Mongo shell that is installed with mongodb-clients package? So this one is an easy one, we can see here it's five letters and it ends with O, so mongo, submit, and that's the answer. I don't actually have this installed, so I guess it doesn't come with Parrot, and even if we go to sudo apps get install, mongo, the only thing I have here is mongoose, so that's no good. Let's go and have a look at hack tricks and see what they've got for mongodb. Pen test in MongoDB, and so we can use PyMongo. So we could install pip install PyMongo, and we could just write a Python script to go through and do some of this for us. But here's some basic commands. So what was it just asking us? I think it asked us what's the command used for listing all the databases present. So we have here show DBS. So that's going to show us the databases, and then we can say use with the database name and then we can show collections and then we can find things in the collections and this is basically the structure of the MongoDB so we have databases and then within those databases we have collections and then within those collections we have documents which are filled with key value pairs holding literal data uh, we can see here the nmap scripts we can run how to brute force the databases object ID prediction okay going a little bit out of our away from our task so let's go and fill in this answer show DBS what command is used for listing out the collections in database okay so again show collections so again uh, there's a pattern there we show DBS we show collections and what is the command for used for dumping the content of all documents within the collection named flag. So we can see here in the script does it use it? No. db.current.find. Okay, so we can use this to find, oh there we go, dump the collection. db.collection.find. But we're missing the last bit there. You can see, so it's going to be db dot what was that again oh yeah dot flag it'll be here because it's asking us for a collection named flag so it's going to be db dot flag dot show no sorry dot find brackets and then dot something so let's go and try and set this mongodb shell up and see uh, what these commands look like now there's a few different ways you could do this in the walkthrough I noticed that they grabbed the binary the Mongo binary as far as I remember. Um, what I did here, let me just search Mongo DB install Debian and just have a look at the documentation. So it actually tells us what we can do here. We can add this to our repo and we should then be able to install the packages. There's a variety of packages. There's also so you don't actually need to install everything from Mongo. You can install the mongodb-org-shell, but I think you need to have quite a few things installed for that to be available. You can also use an npm package. So there was this mongo sh npm I found. So you should be able to run like npm install-g mongo sh and this will just ensure, install the shell so it's just like a client shell that you can use to connect to a server because obviously for this hack the box machine you don't need to have your own mongodb you just want to be able to connect to one uh, but anyway let me just show the way that i did it because that's generally how i do these videos 
Um, so this tells us that's depreciated, that's fine. It tells us we should try and install this. I know I've already got it installed, but we'll do that anyway. If you didn't have it installed, you'd do this next bit as well. And then it tells us to add this to our sources list. So I'm going to take a copy of that. We run through that and then sudo apps get update. And then this should show up. Okay, let me minimize that. Oh, notice we get an error there as well. Skipping acquire of configured file as the repo doesn't support this x86 architecture. So uh, we can actually fix that. Let me just go back and that command that we just ran, you can just insert here some square brackets and then say arc equals AMD64. And then if we do that again, we don't get that error. And now if we do sudo apps get install mongo, you can see we've got plenty of options. So I know that you can install this one, the mongo org shell. I installed this one last time, but I didn't see this one just so let me just let's do that one. We'll install that while that's running. Let me just remind everybody about this awesome program TLDR, which you can search like TLDR Mongo and it'll give you some examples of common commands that are run with Mongo. I don't have that Mongo installed, but now we've got this Mongo SH. Let's see if it's got anything for that. Okay, it's not found. It's updating the cache. Maybe it'll find it. Maybe it's just not added. So there's some tools that aren't supported. Another thing to mention as well, I just recently installed, well, I already had this FZF installed. I think it comes with Parrot, or maybe I installed it at some point. But you can use you can set up a shortcut with Control and R to basically get th through your history quite easily. So you can like type in something here and it'll search through the history. Very easy to repeat commands that you've run before. Uh, shout out to Mahmood who recommended I set that up. Uh, okay, so it's creating an index for that one. Don't know if it's actually going to add it. But we've got Mongo SH installed now. So let's just take that and we could have a look at the help menu, stuff like that. But we don't need too much here anyway, we can just pass in the IP address, so I'll do mongo sh and then we'll do mongo.hackthebox just to save grabbing the IP. We open it up and then as we saw in the help options, in the in Hacktrix, we can do show dbs, here's our databases. So we want to select one of them, so we'll say use admin and then we can do show collections. We've got the system.version, so Presumably now we can say db dot uh, yeah db dot system dot version. Actually, let me let's go and check a different one. Let's do use config show collections. There's the sessions. Okay, let's do use local show collections startup log and then use sensitive information. That always sounds good show collections and here we have the flag so now we can do db dot flag you'll see it'll come up here with the tab auto complete and then dot and we want to do find as we saw on hacktrix and this is what we want to try and find out here is what to do next so we can hit tab auto complete see what we've got we know that if we go back to our question it's a six character function and it's asking us to print it in a format that's easy to read. So if we have a look through them, we should find I can't even see it now. Oh there it is, pretty. Okay. Uh, there we go, pretty. We run through that and we get back our flag. I'll not submit that just yet, because let's go and actually have a look and see what else we had. So we had show DBS, let's do use users, show collections, and then we've got this e-commerce app. So we could do the same thing again. Let's change that to e-commerce. And here this actually brings up some email addresses, passwords, usernames, etc. So we might want to go and take one of these and see can we take it to crackstation.net or something like that. You could also use Hashcat or John the Ripper. Try crack hash. Not found. Alright, you might want to grab them all and try them. I'm not sure is this something that hacked the box set up or is it just like the demo 
database set up by MongoDB. But anyway, we've got all of our answers. Let us take a copy of the answer to this question. Let's go back, submit that, and let's submit our root flag as well. One of the recent Hack the Box machines had no SQL injection in it as well, so I'll not spoil which one it is, but it was a, a good box. It was relatively easy. I would recommend going and checking out the active boxes and see if you can put some of these starting point skills to the test. All right, I think that's about it. Let me, let's me let actually just download the walkthrough for that one. Open. So you can see here we've got an explanation about what MongoDB is and what NoSQL is. It goes through our MAP scan, more about MongoDB. And yeah, they downloaded this tar file which they've extracted and then just copied over the binary or just ran the binary. Um, I revert my VM on a habitual basis so anytime I do like a hack the box machine or any kind of CTF I basically revert back to the snapshot of my VM before the CTF or the box and then I'll just periodically update things, update git repos and packages and things like that and create a new snapshot that I use as my base. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks.